Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 11 of my Blender video tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to 3D print all of your Blender models, as well as how to work with either SVG or vector files inside of Blender. Like always, you'll find a link to some shortcuts that I talk about in this tutorial, as well as some links to some other information that I will bring up as the tutorial continues, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so I'm going to be using all free software. Of course, you're going to be able to use things like Illustrator to create vector art, no problem. But here is Inkscape, which is what I'm using in this tutorial. And if you want to get it, it's basically Illustrator for free. And you can get it at Inkscape.org. And then just click on download. And you can use it on either Linux, Windows, or on Mac. So it works on every single platform exactly the same. And in the description, I have a link to my Inkscape tutorial that you can watch if you want to learn how to create all kinds of vector art. Then I'm also going to be using another free piece of software called the Ultimaker Cura program and you can also download that for free and it is available for free on every single operating system as well. And as the tutorial continues I'm going to show you how to use both of these pieces of software. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this tutorial is I'm going to show you how to make a uh, board game that is called Settlers of Catan. And basically it just has a whole bunch of tiles on it. And I'm going to show you how to take this vector art and put it on a hexagon tile. And then I'm going to jump over into the Cura program and you're going to be able to actually convert it into a file that you're going to be able to print on a 3D printer. So you can see here, I went and drew this. These are going to represent the wood inside of the Settlers of Catan uh, game. And I went and just created this using the Bezier tool and all this stuff over here. Like I said, there's in the description, there is a link to how to use Inkscape. And of course, I will provide all of these files for free, this vector art. So you can just go to my website and download it all and, you know, print out this stuff. And if you want to know what all those files look like, here they are. So inside of Settlers of Catan, you have uh, bricks and you have, this is actually ore. This is going to represent the sea, the wheat, the trees, the sheep, and the desert. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over into Blender and show you how to import all of these files. And these are all SVG files. Inside of Inkscape, you're going to want to save all these files as plain, not Inkscape SVG files, but as plain SVG files. So, so for example, inside of Illustrator, if you want to save this, uh, all you would do is go File and Save As, and then you would come down here and choose just basic SVG file. Okay, so I'm going to call this Trees 2 just so I can show you everything. So Trees 2, SVG, Save, and this is going to pop up. You're going to want to make sure that it is SVG 1.1, that's perfectly fine. Type SVG, not Adobe CS, whatever that said, CEF, no, SVG, that's what you want. Just wanted to make sure you knew that and then click on OK. And then likewise, inside of Inkscape, you just go File, Save As, and then you're going to get the option to save as an SVG file. See, there's Inkscape, SVG. I always just save as plain SVG. OK, so there you go, and you can click on Save. All right, so here we are inside of Blender, and I'm just going to delete the cube. Very first thing I want to do is I want to create my hexagon that I'm going to put those um, vector art onto. Okay, so the very first thing we need to do is I'm going to first switch to millimeters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and click on scene, and you can see I have camera here unit presets i'm going to change this to millimeters like that and that's all that i need to do i'm not going to change absolutely anything else and then what i need to do is i'm going to create a circle so i'm going to go shift and a and we're going to create a circle and then over here to turn this into a hexagon i'm going to of course change this to six vertices and then i know that the tiles that i want to print see down here is where i'm doing everything the tiles that i want to print are going to have a radius of 45.75 if i want them to match up to what i have inside of you know the actual game of settlers of Catan. okay so we got that and then i can zoom out and you're going to see right there, there is the hexagon. I'm going to click on where it says fill type and it says nothing. I'm going to change that to triangle fan. So there we go. Now that is all filled in. I'm then going to rotate this. I'm first off going to hit N on here. And then the rotation for my uh, Z is going to be negative 30. So there that is. And then you can see the hexagon that I have all set up inside of there. I'm now going to jump over into edit mode. So I'm going to click on tab. 
and then I'm going to extrude this guy so that it has some thickness to it. So I am going to come over. So I'm going to press on E and then I'm going to hit enter. And then over here in the bottom left hand corner in the Z area, I'm going to change this to 6.35. 6.35. And we can see here that it added some depth to that. And then I can keep it in this perspective so that I can see some more. Then what I want to do is I want to go E and S. And I'm going to move this in a little tiny bit. And because the hexagons that are inside of here are going to basically, it's going to be a, a hexagon and then it's going to be an inset and then another hexagon. And then we're going to have the image printed on top of it. So I went and did that. And I can change this to something more specific. Of course, I can change it to like 0.9 and it's going to automatically update. But you're going to want all these to be the same. So 0.9 and 0.9. Okay, so you can change that after the fact if you want to be very, very precise with the editing that you're doing. Then I'm going to go E and S once again, and then I'll hit enter again. And then I can either move this guy here or I can come down here once again and change this if I would like. So let's just change it to three, for example. Then I can also come in and change this value over here. So let's say I just wanted to increase the value on this extrusion. I could do this. So let's just change the nine and that looks about right. We're trying it 9.5. Just showing you multiple different ways we can edit this and hit A to deselect it. And then that's basically what I'm looking for tile wise. Okay, so now what I want to do is show you how to import our vector art inside of here and then cut into the face of this tile and then convert it into a file that we're going to be able to print. So cool stuff. So what I want to do is I want to go and import my SVG file. So I'm going to go file and I'm going to go import and SVG is an option right there. And let's just go and use our tree. You can see there's a listing of everything. I'll just go import SVG. I'm going to then need to upgrade or up. Uh, increase the size on this guy. So I'm going to come over here to scale and I'm going to change this to 400 and then whoops I have to undo that so let's just go like this. The guy that I just imported in it is set as curve so I'm clicked on curve that's the uh, trees you know the vector art that I just imported so I want to scale that I don't want to scale anything else. So 400 and 400 and you can see right there is our tree and you can go and move this guy around and let's go ahead and increase this and move it over here and let's change this to top and then we're going to be able to move this around and it's sometimes a little wonky it's just part of the svg file i don't know why it doesn't always put it exactly where you would think all right so basically what we're going to do seven once again that gives us our top perspective i can change this to orthographic there it might look a little bit better then what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep my tree selected and then i'm also going to select the hexagon underneath of this so get both of these at the same time. There we go, got them both. And I'm gonna go into tab mode. And I'm gonna go seven again. Then what I'm gonna do is do a knife project and it's gonna cut through the uh, hexagon that's underneath. So just come over here and knife project. And you're gonna see that it cut right in there exactly where that I wanted it to. I'm gonna hit tab. I'm gonna jump out of that, out of this guy right here. And I'm gonna go and get rid of this curve altogether. So let's just delete that. There it is, it's gone. I also wanna get rid of anything else that could cause problems. I'm gonna get rid of the camera also. And let's just come over here and delete that and get rid of our lamp as well, delete that, and then go tab back over into edit mode. Whoops, I accidentally put that there. I'm gonna shift S and cursor to center and tab back over. And you can see that we still have our tree pattern there. Now what I wanna do is just move that inward so that it will print. So I wanna select the faces on all of this. And I'm gonna deselect it just so you can see how I do that. Down here, I'm gonna click on faces like that. And I'm going to come in and select all the faces. And I'm holding down the shift key and clicking with the right mouse button to get all these in place. Okay, got all our faces. And there we are. I can hit 7 again to see them. And this one, then going to click on E. And I'm going to move it down a little bit. And then I'm going to left click on it. And then over here in the left side, I can go and change the actual position of this if I would like to have it be more precise. As you can see, as I'm clicking, that is moving it down. Here, I'll zoom in a little bit. So there we go. Move down a little bit. And let's just say that I want it to be negative one. 
boom, there we are. And one mistake people can make is actually go through the bottom. You wanna make sure that you don't do that. And you wanna also make sure that you're um, only selecting the top faces whenever you're extruding. See, the bottom's not coming through there. That would have been a disaster. And you can go and double check that. Just click on Z and then you can see exactly where the extrusions are if that works out better for you. And I'm gonna go Z to jump back to just show the solids once again, because I like the way that looks. All right, so now that I have that all set up, I'm actually going to jump back over into uh, regular object mode. You can see that we have our cuts in there exactly like I want. And I'm going to actually scale this down a little bit. Um, you're going to have to scale it. This is actually the, the right size for Settlers of Catan, but I only have a 3D printer that can print four inches by four inches. So I, I need to actually scale it. And I thought, well, I might as well just show you how to do that. All you would do is you come over here and select this and go 0.9 like that. And then select this one and go 0.9 like that. And there you go. That's how easy it is to scale it if it doesn't fit on the bed of your 3D printer. And I think I've covered just about everything else. So the only thing I haven't done is how to export. So I'm going to go File, and I'm going to go Export. The You're going to use an STL file with Cura. So just change this to STL. And I'm just going to call this Wood Caton and Export STL. And then you can save this file or do whatever you want with it. And then this is Ultimaker or Cura. And you can see over here the settings I have. These work really good for my Monoprice um, printer, 3D printer that I have. But it might be different for you. Um, you can just try these settings. Hopefully they work. They should work for you. And you could do like a smaller test print. So I got Cura open. And I'm then going to go Open Files. And then Wood Caton STL is what I just saved that as. I'm going to click on Open. And you can see it's unable to slice. It just means it needs to be positioned. So I'm going to right click with my right mouse button. And that's going to allow me to grab this guy. And I went and selected him. And then I can move him into position. And then all I need to do is just move it into position on the bed where it's going to fit. And everything's going to be perfectly fine here really good stuff and then it's going to say ready to save to removable drive and you're going to come over here you're going to select your removable drive and you're going to click on save to removable drive and that is it and you're done and it, it will give you a file that you're going to be able to save onto your 3d printer and you'll be able to print out all of your tiles so hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, all of the files that I used here are available in the description underneath the video. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.